Welcome to The Teapot Reads. I'm The Teapot. This is what I'm currently reading and I'm so happy to see you today. Hello and welcome to another video on this channel. I was inspired to do a video like this because I was recommending a book to my friend and I was like, hey, I think you'd really like this book. And then she went to try to buy it and found out it is completely out of print. She ended up finding a used copy and she loved it. I was right. But it made me think, what are some books that I own that are out of print? Like they just don't make physical copies anymore. It's really sad when that happens, but of course it happens. It happens to most books, especially if you're not going to become a classic or a perennial backlist, you know, you're going to go out of print and it's very sad. And I have been reading for a very long time. So I definitely, definitely have books on my shelves that are out of print. I went through, I, I was, I didn't go super crazy. Like if it was a book that I had had to buy used, I didn't count it. There are certain editions of like Jane Austen books that I really love the edition of, but I knew it was out of print. So I didn't include that in here because I bought it after its printing had ended. I did include books that I bought while they were still in print, sometimes even when they were new. And I included books that I really was unsure of, except for the one that inspired this video. And I will tell you what that is when we get to it. I also decided to go through, I didn't include any special editions, but I did include editions that they don't print that specific edition anymore. So there are a couple books like that in this video. Again, I didn't go crazy. There are a lot of particular editions that I'm, I'm fairly certain they don't print anymore. Like you just can't get your hands on them. Like I don't think you can get the original covers of Shadow and Bone anymore. But I didn't include it in this video because I feel like that's fairly well known. -ish. Well, that's not true. I didn't include it because it wouldn't have surprised me. The ones I included for the most part surprised me. Um, or but that's not the right word. They just, they're not editions that people online are often lusting over and wanting that particular edition of. Like there's not anything necessarily desirable about these editions. They just don't make them anymore. And I think it's interesting that these are the copies I have. Figuring out if a book is out of print. So it's not like a, I didn't use a fail safe way of doing it. I actually just went on to retailers websites and check to see if you could still get editions of this book. A lot of times if you can, it'll still be listed. It'll just say unavailable or unavailable for now, something like that. But if it's like out of print, you just, it's not even listed as that edition anymore. And that's how I knew a book was completely out of print. Also, I, these books that are out of print are a little older. Are there more books on my shelves that are out of print than what I've pulled here? Probably. Um, glancing at it, I can definitely see covers that I know just aren't made anymore. And there are probably ones on here that would surprise me. Enough of a rambly intro. Let's get into it. First of all are a couple titles that I really thought would be out of print, even if it was just this particular edition. Actually, for all of these, it was just these particular editions. But you can still get all of these editions at your retailers. Number one being these Galance hardcovers. So I just pulled Lies of Lockmore as an example. There are these like Galance Orion Books British hardcovers. They're cloth bound. They're gorgeous. They're for the anniversaries of some of their bigger series. Um, Lies uh, Gentleman Bastards, um, Name of the Wind. I think they did a Graceling one, Mistborn. I want to say there's another series or two. Oh, um, the first law series, I think. So I really thought these were out of print, but they are not. Um, they're not. They're very cool. This is the only edition of Lies of Lakamora I actually own. I haven't read it yet. I should get on that. And I will probably read this edition because I think this is a cool edition. But yeah, I really thought this would be, or this, these would be harder to get your hands on, but no, you can still get them. If you're in America, get them off Book Depository. Then we have Okay, this is the hardcover edition of Cruel Beauty. I knew Cruel Beauty was still in print because Rosamund Hodge, I think is still like liked. You know, people still read her. She's a new series coming out, but I really thought that the hardcover was out of print. I've had this forever. I haven't read it. I'm sorry. I got it when it was new, but really thought it would be harder to get. No, this one still in print. You can still get a hardcover. Don't know if it's on like its final run and they're trying to sell down. I, su I suspect that only because the crimson bound hardcovers are out of print. Paperback is still a thing, but you can't get the hardcovers. I know they're not, you know, 
sequels, but they're kind of companions and they match. They go together. When these came out, everyone was like toting them together. They just, they're together. They're a pair, even if they're not intended to be. But yeah, the hardcover Crimson Bound, you have to buy used. Oh, these next two I thought were going to be out of print are both by Maggie Stavdotter, the original Scorpio Races hardcover and the All the Crooked Saints hardcover. I literally have seen no one talk about this book since it came out. I should read it and see if it's good or bad. Um, but Scorpio Races, I really thought that the original hardcover was out of print. The paperback has been around for a very long time. It has also, um, it just had its, oh my god, was it its 10th anniversary? Or was it its 5th? <laughs> it's 10th. I'm not old or anything. It's 10th anniversary. Owl Crate just did a special edition, which I did get. It's lovely. But I really, really thought you wouldn't be able to get the hardcover of this anymore. And the reason I thought you wouldn't get the hardcover of this anymore, even though it's not nearly as old, is just because I haven't seen a hardcover or even a paperback in person outside of my bookshelf in a long time. And if this is your first video with me, I work at a bookstore and I haven't seen this book there ever. So some other editions that these particular editions are out of print. Um, I know I said I didn't include a lot of like covers that aren't in print anymore for like uh, like popular books, but that's a lie. I did actually include the original Throne of Glass hardcover and yes, I included it to flex a little bit because this is a first printing first edition and one of my most precious editions that I own. But the hardcover of the this original cover, this wasn't really well liked when it came out. I was in the minority. I actually like it a lot. Had they continued with this vibe, I don't think it would have worked for the series, but this cover is what drew me in originally. This cover does not exist anymore. You can't get in hardcover. They did reprint, thank god, Throne of Glass in hardcover with the matching cover, so if you want the complete set you can do that. Oh yeah, I can't get this. And I have a lot of original covers for things because I would buy them new and I have been reading YA fantasy in particular for a very long time. I'm 25. I've been reading it probably since I was like 13, 14. Uh, maybe even before that. And like I have the original Truth Witch covers. I have the original Grisha verse covers. I have the Wrath and the Dawn in the original cover. I think you can still get that. I have the Winner's Curse original hardcover. You know, I just have really old covers that just aren't in print anymore. But this was sort of to be an example of that. To represent myself and also to flex. Because I am not a humble person. <laughs> so my next two that I have that these particular editions are out of print are Vicious by V.E. Schwab. They're both by V.E. Schwab. This is Vicious. This is, I believe, her first adult book was Vicious. Unless you count The Near Witch. I'm very uncertain about that because originally it was marketed as YA, but now is in the adult section of the store, so I don't know where that kind of lands. But this is the original paperback cover. I remember when this came out and people loved it. I never really vibed with it. I love the redone covers. The other title that um, this particular edition is out of print, you can get it in paperback still, I think, which is really strange, and you can get it in the Dark Archive bind-up as well. That is a thing you can get, uh, is the Archived. So by V.E. Schwab, this was her second book because it was The Near Witch and then it was The Archived. So I was really surprised to see that you could still get some editions of this book standing alone, not part of the Dark Archive. I'm guessing they're just printing, like, they're not printing anymore, they're just selling out of this book. Some people really love this. I didn't like the archived. I didn't like it. I just keep it because I like the Ish Bob. But book two, The Unbound, is completely out of print. You can't get it outside of the Dark Archive omnibus. Um, so yeah, take a look. It's a hardcover. It's pretty. I love these covers. I never read this one because I was not impressed with the archived. In general, I haven't been impressed with V.E. Schwab's YA books, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so the book that I recommended to my friend that I was like, I think you'd like this book, and then found out it was out of print that inspired this whole video is Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea by April Genevieve Tucholki. This is, like, I mean, this cover is gorgeous. This is one of my favorite books. Um, I wouldn't say it's in my top 10 but it's definitely my top 20. It is so very good. It is really atmospheric, really gothic. If you liked, um, if you liked House of Salt and Sorrows or Winter Song, I would strongly recommend this one. It's sort of horror, 
but it's like summer horror. It was just delicious. My memories of sitting next to the open window with the summer breeze coming in as I sat on the couch, just the memory is stamped into my head and I, I freaking loved this book. But sadly, out of print, you can't get hardcover, you can't get paperback, you can probably get an ebook. I didn't actually check that. Uh, but if you can get your hands on it, I strongly, strongly recommend it. There is a sequel. I never read the sequel. I don't own the sequel. I should reread this and get the sequel though. And finally, this breaks my heart um, to find out that these books are out of print. This absolutely breaks my heart because it is one of my favorite YA fantasy series. Just, it's so good. It is the Lumineer Chronicles by Melina Marchetta. These are so good. Oh, broke my heart. Um, I was really hoping I'd be wrong when I was like, maybe these. So we have Finnegan of the Rock. A stunner. Froy of the Exiles. One of the best books I've ever read. And Quintana of Shirin, which is really a good finale. Not my favorite of the trilogy, but still really, really good. Now, Quintana, there are still some paperback editions that I was able to find listed or regular price by the publisher, like not third party sellers. But I have a feeling seeing as the first two books are ebook only everywhere I looked, this one's probably on its way out. <laughs> Lumineer Chronicles are just fantastic. Like I said, one of my favorite YA fantasy series, maybe my favorite YA fantasy series. It's really good. The families in this series are amazing. The twists and the plot turns Oh my god, just insane. Drew me in. This is the most complex and nuanced fantasy series I've seen aimed at teens. It is just miles beyond anything else on the market right now and heartbreakingly out of print. So yes, I do own some out of print books and I'm so sad that they are out of print. That is just upsetting for most of them. I don't really care about the Unbound. Like, you can still get that easy. It's in the Dark Archive, but oh, I just, my heart hurts to know that Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea and the Lumineer Chronicles are not going to be easy to find for new readers. These books are so good. I don't know why I thought this video would be more fun, but it has such a like sad ending to it. But yes, those are the books on my shelves that I was able to determine are completely out of print. Yeah. And like I said, there may be more. I don't think there are any other titles that the title itself you just really can't get outside of possibly an ebook. I definitely have different editions that are out of print. Like that's interesting, but that's not as interesting, I think, as just being completely gone. When stories go out of print, it's natural. It's a part of the publishing process, but it's sad because those stories are a little bit erased. And you have to think, you know, you have to sort of compare those stories to like the death of, I don't know, a person because when a person dies, there's, there's no more story to, to create. And when a story goes out of print, there's nothing else to tell. And anyway, definitely expect to see a video about the Lumineer Chronicles coming for me at some point to try to convince you to read them and maybe... <laughs> if we get more people interested in this phenomenal trilogy. This is where I leave you. I know this was a short video, but thank you for popping by. Thank you for being here. If you're somewhere cold, I hope you're staying warm. If you're somewhere warm, I hope you're staying comfortable. And most of all, I hope you're reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye.